Today I'm gonna to show you how we care for our chickens in the heat, in the Texas heat, that can get up to over 110 degrees. I'm gonna tell you what we do, and probably more importantly, I'm gonna tell you what we don't do. All right, y'all, I'm gonna give y'all just a little bit of context real quick as to why I feel like I am qualified to speak on this subject. We have owned and raised laying hens for well over a decade now. Uh, we usually have between five um, to 10 to 12 at any given time. We also have had a small group of silkies that we've raised and we've also hatched uh, chicks with them uh, for the last four or five years um, also. And then on and off for the last couple of years, we've also uh, been raising meat chickens. So this is our small little flock of, I think we have 13, these are called Rudd Ranger meat chickens. We will be harvesting these guys in about a month, a little less than a month actually. So I'm not sure exactly where our laying hens are, but I'm going to see if I can get them to come out. My guess is obviously they're somewhere in the shade, probably over, probably over there somewhere. See them appearing. <laughs> Dummies, they ran the wrong way. Here they come. I don't have any food for y'all. Sorry. Sorry, ladies. When I whistle for them like that, I usually, when we bring them out a treat or some bread scraps or something. So, and then here's our silkies. This is our rooster chili. This is one of our chicks that we recently hatched out. And we have two hens in here in our AB tubing coop. And these two hens are basically broody all the time. So these two are trying to go broody. I don't know if you can see very well. They're trying to go broody in the same nesting box. Not part of this video, but we also raise pigs. On this AV tubing coop, we have a automatic chicken door. And our coop for our laying hens is actually located inside this garden shed. About the back third of this garden shed is a coop. And we also have a automatic door on our laying hens coop as well. Another thing that we raise is quail. So guys, I'm going to tell you what we do to care for our chickens in the heat, but more importantly, I'm going to tell you what we don't do. I'm going to start out first with what we don't do. We don't do things that are that we can't consistently do. We don't do things that if we're out of town and we ask friends or family to come care for our animals, that it's unrealistic to ask them to try to do as well. For instance, we don't bring our chickens inside, ever. Um, our chickens have experienced literally negative degree temperatures when we had snowmageddon a few years ago, and they have experienced 110 to 114 degree temperature and everything in between, and they've never been brought inside. That is unrealistic to ask uh, us to do that for them, and it's very unrealistic to ask someone that's caring for them while we're out of town, which we do occasionally do. Um, it's unrealistic to ask them to try to do that as well. Uh, we don't use frozen milk jugs or frozen water bottles either put in the, the coop with them beside them to keep them cool or we don't put it in their water either same thing it's too uh, um, 
hard to do it consistently and it would be too hard to ask somebody to do that while we're gone. I've seen people on some of the Facebook pages say they put ice cubes in their water to encourage them to drink. Uh, again, we don't do that either. My thought process is, is if you can't consistently do that and you get your chickens used to it, like for instance, bringing them inside when it's um, over a certain temperature, um, something like that, if, if you get them used to that and then for whatever reason you can't do it, um, you're just setting them up for certain um, death or, or problems with them. Because the first time you don't do it, they're gonna be used to it and it's gonna affect them in a very negative way. So this is what we do. We provide our chickens with multiple places to drink water. Every, uh, our silky pen, our meat chickens, and our laying hens that are out in our yard, they have multiple places they can get cool, fresh water from throughout the entire day. Second is shade. Um, that's one of the most important things. Our laying hens have multiple places in our yard that they can get in out of the shade from. Uh, Silkies and their pen have that as well. And the meat chickens, as you can see in the video, um, they have a tarp um, that they can get underneath pretty much the entire day and, and get plenty of shade. Another thing um, in that shade is they need ventilation. We have used box fans before um, and just to help air move in a certain area. If you have a, a day that you're not, you know, you're gonna get really high temperatures and not much wind, uh, definitely consider if you have electricity available uh, to put a box fan out just to keep air moving. Moving air is so much cooler than the air that's not moving. So for us, um, pretty much all the animals that we have on our homestead serve a purpose. We like to have everything as automated and hands off as possible. We have automatic waters, automatic doors. Um, we have very busy lives. We have uh, three kids and we, we want to be as hands off as possible. So that's another reason why we don't want to condition our chickens to have some unrealistic um, uh, way of keeping them cool. Uh, it's just not practical for us. And, and the bottom line is, is chickens are hardy animals. Uh, you know, people have raised chickens for, for hundreds, thousands of years, hundreds or thousands of years. And, <clears throat> you know, 100 years ago, 200 years ago, people didn't have um, a way to cool their animals at all. Um, so. You know, a lot, a lot of the animals had a limited amount of shade even. Um, so, and those chickens, uh, you know, back then thrived as much as ours do today. So, um, it's just, I think people feel better when they're trying to do something for them. But the bottom line is, is it's, um, it's just, they will be fine. They, they would be fine virtually with nothing, with no assistance from us at all. So guys, we live in North Texas. Uh, yesterday, I think it was 107 degrees, 108 degrees in June. So, we experience heat here all the time and uh, you know occasionally uh, a couple of our um, hens or laying hens are getting older um, we've had them for quite a while now and i believe last summer we lost one and the summer before we lost one when it got hot um, but i think they were on their the their, their way downhill anyway and and the heat just um you know was probably more than they could handle um, but it didn't they, they would have died eventually of old age um, regardless the heat didn't kill them I think it just kind of sped up things um, but you know we could have brought the chicken inside and put it in a some kind of container in the house and you know and and babied it and probably got it through the summer and then it would have probably end up dying soon after that anyway and like I said it's not a, not a what we want to do not obtainable for us to, to, to do that kind of thing so guys what I'm speaking about now obviously are grown chickens uh, when you have chicks that's a different story let me take you in here and show you our last hatching of silky chicks so these little guys are i don't know a week old maybe So we had a little cold front blow in yesterday, like I said, it was 107, 108. Today, it's only supposed to be in the mid 90s. Uh, so we've got these guys outside. We have been bringing them inside. Yesterday, they were inside the entire day. Uh, they were actually inside, uh, we've been out of town for a few days. They didn't, they've been inside the, uh, the entire time. And, and realistically, the only reason we've been, uh, we bring them out here at night is because they're very loud. They chirp all night long and we can't sleep. So we've been bringing them out here at night and closing my shop door so they're safe and secure and then bring them inside you know, or bring them outside tonight inside during the day you know it, it 
it goes without saying, but you know, when you're doing that, if you do have chicks and you're, you're raising them inside because of the cold or the heat, which I do recommend, um, if you do take them outside, you have to do it um, gradually and let them get used to that heat. If you were to have them inside um, and it's over 100 degrees outside and you had them inside for a week or two and then just took them outside right away, that would probably shock them and you would lose some, if not all of them. You guys, I hope this video helped y'all. Um, I can assure you, uh, there's a lot of people out there that worry about uh, their chickens and, and livestock in general more than they should when it gets uh, too hot or too cold. Uh, like I said, for, for thousands of years, um, there was no way to keep them warm, keep them cold. Uh, you know, they just had to um, to fend for themselves. And, you know, uh, fortunately over the years, um, when the weaker animals died off, it just made the next generation stronger and stronger and um, made more hardy animals. Uh, and that's what you want. You want animals that are hardy. You don't want animals that, that you have to, um, that have to be cared for more than they should. Um, that, that's not the purpose of livestock. That's not what our purpose for them is. We want them to be hardy and as hands off as possible. We want them to do their job. We want to care for them and, and give them what they need, uh, but not more than what they need. Guys, uh, hope this video helped y'all. Um, we're not experts, but uh, we've done this for a while now, and this has worked for us. It may not be the right way for everybody, but it works for us. Um, please leave us a comment. Let us know uh, what y'all do for your animals. Uh, did I miss something? Um, and what do you not do? Do you do you uh, do you bring them inside when it's cold? Do you bring them inside when it's uh, when it's hot? Do you put ice in their water? Does that help? Um, like to hear your comments, so please leave those below. If you haven't already, please think about subscribing and following us. Uh, it just helps our channel get seen. Uh, we would greatly appreciate it, and we'll see you all again.